You heard what they said. You even responded. That has to mean that you're engaged, right? Maybe not. Stay tuned. I'm the CEO. It's mega chop, mega chop. You already know. Last week we talked about being engaged or being present and which one we should be focusing on. If you're starting to watch this video and you're like, mm, I don't know the difference between present or engaged, does it really matter? Click the link down below. I'm dropping the first video for present or engaged. Watch that first because we're going to be building on that in this video. We're going to talk about how do we move from being present to being engaged. At this point, you might be starting to think about someone who doesn't engage with you. Ah, uh, stop. That's normal human tendency. We hear a message and we're like, oh, uh, there's this person and this person. They need to see this video. They need to see these video. Maybe. Don't you worry about it. Focus on the one thing you can control, and that's yourself. Focus on doing everything that you can do. So many people around you will take note when they see a dramatic change in you of what the heck are they doing? Where did you get this decision to change? How are, where, I don't get it. I feel so much better being around you. And they will have a tendency to want to emulate that or imitate the actions that you're doing. So when you focus on yourself, naturally you're going to help influence those who are around you. So let's start there. In this video, we're gonna look at multiple scenarios on how we can make those changes to go from present to being engaged. One of those is when we are physically distracted and we're kept in that present status, not the engaged because of our environment, something there. And someone comes up and they say, hey, I want to chat with you. So you say, okay, you leave your books if they're open, you leave your video game on, you leave the TV on, and they're talking to you, but you realize a few minutes in, you're not 100% sure what they're talking about because you can't help but keep glancing at the book that's open on your lap or checking to see what the heck's happening on TV. So so you're distracted, you're present, but you're not engaged. Take a second, close the book, put a bookmark in it, close the book, turn off the TV, pause your video game and turn off the TV. Take the actions that you need so you can stop being distracted and go into engage. As we're diving into these different ways of being distracted, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert at the beginning of the video. The solution in all these scenarios is going to come down to making a decision. Now for everyone who's like, well, I can multitask. I can watch TV, play video games, read a book and listen to somebody and actively respond to them at the same time. False. Scientifically, it has been proven that we cannot multitask. We cannot do two high level brain functions at the same time. If you're really wanting to watch that TV show and take in everything that it has, that's all you're actually going to be doing. If you want to engage with somebody and hear everything that they have to say, and then also respond intelligently and truly engage with them, that's all that you can do at that exact moment. So let's put that to the side. Don't worry about multitasking. Just focus on the person that's there. The next scenario is a little bit more difficult to quickly change. Say you're at a coffee shop, you're out to lunch, you're at the mall and you're sitting there chatting with your best friend and all the people who are walking by just continue to distract you or the way somebody over there is chewing distracts you or there's somebody that you find physically attractive and they're distracting you. All of these are very real scenarios that could distract you when you're out in public. That can be more difficult and trust me, it's super obvious to the person that you're talking with that you're distracted by all these things. So if you come to them and say, hey, I'm so sorry, I'm very distracted. There's so many things going on here. Is there a chance that we can go somewhere else? Maybe there's a couple of chairs out in a small park nearby 
or somewhere where there's far less distractions so that you can actually hone in on them trust me they will actually be thankful they will not be upset or disappointed that you're getting distracted people understand that and it will mean the world to them that you actually made a point to say hey you're important enough to me that i'm having a hard time processing everything that you're saying and i really want to you matter enough that i want to hear everything that you have to say and talk about that with you that will be huge in their book the next scenario is if you have something that's running through your mind that continues to distract you that can be very difficult you can't just say hey let's go switch rooms right it's in your brain you can't say let's change our environment and i'll be able to focus better because your brain your thoughts they're gonna go with you to that other room to that other place so we have to mentally almost switch rooms change gears we have to do something to get whatever that thought is off the table for now so that we can focus on who's in front of us, who's truly most important at that time. And your thought that's preoccupying you is obviously important. It's not gonna be there if it's not. So let's do something that psychologically helps your mind wipe the slate clean. You can write it down old fashioned, grab yourself a piece of paper and a pen, jot down whatever that is and set it aside. Or take your phone and open up a notes app, set yourself a calendar reminder, put in there whatever it is that's on your mind that's distracting you. Oh yes, but before you do that, make sure you tell the person, say, hey, I want to give you my undivided attention. There's this silly thought that I have that I can't get off my mind. Are you okay if I just write it down, take a second, write it down real quick, and that way I can give you my full attention again this will not offend somebody they may be like wait did you not catch the last half an hour if you wait too long but if you're a minute or two in and they just got started they're not going to be offended they're not going to be upset you can just say hey let me jot this down real quick so that i can give you my undivided attention and they will absolutely notice the difference when you start to engage and ask those questions that actually apply to what they're saying the next scenario is probably by far the hardest, unless you've got some practice behind it. That's gonna be when somebody wants to tell you about something that they are super passionate about. Like this is their jam. This is something that they could talk about for hours. Their thought, their viewpoint on it is 100% in the opposite direction of where your thought is. So you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you think that about this. And all you want to do is fire back um, why their opinion is so wrong and how many reasons it's wrong. Don't, trust me, don't do that. There is massive value in putting ourselves aside, putting our thoughts aside, and focusing in on them and what they think. It's okay to have completely opposing opinions and differences. And it's even more important, it's even more valuable to hear them out. And take a genuine interest. Try to find out what led them to that opinion. What took them on that path down that direction. You may learn a lot yourself by asking questions and inquiring and trying to pull out that information. And the very worst, at the end of the day, you took time, you made somebody feel valuable on a topic where you feel differently, and you now have a better understanding of what may bring people to those decisions, what may bring people to those opinions. Because there's no reason that that, that choice, that decision should create a rift between you and a friend or a loved one. It's okay for you guys to think differently. It can be a very difficult thing to take yourself out though and it absolutely will take practice i would start out with baby steps if you're super passionate on certain topics start out with ones that you think in a different uh direction than somebody else but yeah you're like 
I could take it or leave it. It's not the most valuable subject to me in the world. Start out with those and work your way up. Okay, so tying back to that spoiler that we talked about earlier in the video, all of these come back to making decisions. All of these are mental choices that we make. We make the choice on whether we're going to be distracted or not be distracted. And I'm not gonna dig too far into this, but mental thoughts and physical actions are very closely tied together. We learn physical things. We learn that if this happens, we can do this or vice versa. Those are things that we learn to do. We can also unlearn those or retrain ourselves to do things differently. The same thing goes for our thoughts. We are in 100% control of our thoughts. To a point, we might sometimes get a thought that pops in that we're like, where the heck did that come from? But we can quickly take that thought and say, you know what, mm, I'm not digging that, you're out of here. So we can also take thought processes ways that we get distracted, we can relearn those, retrain those. And what do I mean by that? So where do we start this whole process of retraining? If we've been doing the same thing for 20 years or 60 years or even 100 years, is it possible to make a change? It is, but we have to make a decision. We have to decide, do I dislike this enough that I want to apply the effort that it's going to take to retrain this. And keep in mind, if we've been doing it for all those years, it's not going to be overnight. It's going to take concentrated effort to make that change, to make that difference, typically in those lives around us. It's going to take a concentrated effort to make this change, to make the decision that this is how I see things consistently go when I go on this path. I don't like it. I want to go on this path and I'm going to go on this path. So we make the decision to change paths and we start to take note of our actions that lead to the path that we don't like. So we notice, okay, if I ignore their comment, they walk away frustrated. I'm not going to do that again. Okay, so this next time we talk, I don't ignore their comment, but I give them a grunt and they don't like that either so they disconnect and they're like nah i'm done with this conversation we keep tracing our steps back to what brought us to these automatic responses that we do today and we rewalk those steps backwards like retracing our steps if we lost something we've learned to quickly respond in certain ways over the years when someone says x y or z to us so we need to back up and figure out okay what what do i do what train of thought leads me to that one, to this one? So we just take a step back in our responses and we start to think about them instead of all these things happening naturally without thinking about them. And the more we retrace, we finally get back to that original point of, oh, when they say this, I start to disconnect myself and that takes me down that path. So. If I can retrain where I don't disconnect when they say that, I can take this down the path that I really want it to. And sometimes we may decide, okay, well, when they say that, that is hurtful, we need to address that. Or when they say that, maybe that's a me thing. Why, why do I get disconnected? I shouldn't get disconnected. I need to fix that and then I'll be able to continue down this path that I wanna go. So now we know the difference between present and engaged, we've talked about what are the steps that I need to take to make sure that I am fully engaged. But there's a couple people around me that frequently interact with me and they're not engaged. And I know I said before that, hey, you can't control them. Don't worry about it. That's because we have to start with ourselves. But there are some tricks that we can learn that when we're interacting with someone who's not engaged, sometimes we can help them get engaged or we can talk about why they're not engaged. And we're going to take a look at that in our next video. If you want to talk to me live about any of these concepts, any of these ideas that we talk about in our weekly YouTube videos, feel free to come and visit me live. I'm on Mixer, mixer.com slash megachopceo. I'm live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings, and I love to talk with everybody about these kind of topics. Come by and visit. Until then, click like, 
subscribe and smash that bell for notifications and I'll see you next week.